Good evening everyone, you're watching Brass Tacks, I'm Shivani Gupta. Congress leader Salman Khurshid has drawn an analogy between Lord Ram and Rahul Gandhi and that's created another political furore, with the BJP accusing the Congress of hurting Hindu sentiments. While the Congress likens Rahul to a yogi, BJP reminds Congress of its anti-Hindu stance on issues in the past. Another flashpoint related to the Bharat Jodo Yatra? So has Congress crossed the line or is the BJP rattled with the Yatra? We debate that in just a bit. First, the story of the day. Congress leader Salman Khurshid has sparked yet another storm. This time, comparing the Bharat Jodo Yatra to Ramayan and Rahul Gandhi to Lord Ram. The reference was to Rahul Gandhi wearing just a T-shirt on a chilly Delhi December morning while visiting the samadhis of former Prime Ministers. For which Khurshid likened Rahul Gandhi to a monk. He is superhuman. We have worn a jacket coat and we have worn a T-shirt. Tell us, we are in the cold, in the cold, and we are wearing a T-shirt. He is a very... एक योगी जैसी जब उन्होंने कहीं भी हमें तपस्या में हो तो वो तपस्या कर रहे हैं। The BJP accused Congress of hurting the sentiments of Hindus। हिंदू समाज की और केवल हिंदू समाज की क्यों? पूरे भारत के हर नागरिक की भावनाओं को आहत करने का काम कांग्रेस पार्टी करती आई है और कर रही है। क्योंकि भगवान से तुलना करना किसी के इष्ट से एक व्यक्ति की तुलना करना अपने आप में एक दुस्साहस है और जनता इनको जरूर सबक सिखाए। Sears also took offence to Khurshid's remarks. रोड पे आप देखो ना ठंड में कई बेचारे गरीब और पागल जो है वो नंगे घूम रहा है। कम कपड़ा पहनने से राम होता तो ये जो और तपस्वी हो जाता तो ये नंगे जो घूम रहे हैं जो पागल तो ये तो सिद्ध का लाएंगे। But Khurshid remained defiant. देश उसी रास्ते को चुनेगा जो देश को स्वीकार है। नागपुर का रास्ता नहीं चुनेगा। Rahul Gandhi has been accused of playing the soft Hindu card on multiple occasions. Last month, he visited the Mahakaleshwar Temple in Madhya Pradesh's Ujjain. His party has called him a Shiv Bhakt and a Janyodhari Hindu. So is the Rahul Ram analogy simply an attempt to woo the Hindu vote back? Let's go across to the guests joining us. We'll be joined by some political representatives in just a bit. Arun Anand, first post consulting editor, and Sanjay Jha, formerly with the Congress Party, uh, political analyst joining us on the show. I want to understand from you, Sanjay Jha, where these analogies are coming from. And ironically, it has come from a man, Salman Khurshid, who has likened Hindutva to Boko Haram and ISIS in the past. Today, he uses or invokes the name of Lord Ram uh, to talk about Rahul Gandhi and his quote-unquote tapasya and his yatra. Is Congress taking it a bit too far? Uh, Shivani, good evening to you and my fellow panelists and your viewers on CNN News 18. Uh, let me start by first puncturing the BJP's hypocrisy, which I think is now reaching a repugnant level, almost insufferable to bear. And I will give you three or four instances that exposes my friend Gaurav Bhatia, if I'm not mistaken, was he the guy who was in the press conference? Yes. And the entire BJP top brass as being the biggest fraudulent political players in the country. Let me, just hear me out. I'll give you three examples, maybe four. Uh, Mr. Narendra Modi is the 11th avatar of Lord Vishnu, mm -hmm. said a BJP leader, a spokesperson by the name of somebody called Avat Vag. Mm -hmm. He is the incarnation of Lord Ram, mm -hmm. said Mr. Kabal Patel. This is not an insult to Lord Ram. To equate Narendra Modi to Lord Ram is not an insult, of course. Rahul Gandhi is an insult. Narendra Modi is not. Mm. Number three, third example. He is like God. Mm. Narendra Modi is like God, said a BJP chief by the name of Adesh Gupta. I don't know these gentlemen personally, but they have all featured very prominently in the mainstream media for their outrageous, outlandish and obtuse comments comparing Lord Ram. I'm a very proud Hindu, by the way. And I felt extremely mortified and insulted 
that Lord Ram was being compared to Mr. Narendra Modi, who is, okay. let's be honest, a regular politician who was even denied a visa to go to the United States of America. Recently, you even had a celebrity wife of a former chief minister who called Mr. Narendra Modi the father of the nation or the father of new India. So the BJP needs to take a deep breath and stop fooling the people of this country. Now, I want to make one other point. I don't agree with anybody equating gods with politicians. Hmm. I'm a politician myself, but I will tell you, all politicians are flawed. All politicians have chinks in their armor. They are regular human beings who are made larger than life because of television. Everybody is pretty much a normal human being. Some of them extremely corrupted, communal and cunning. So I would decry and also condemn anybody comparing Rahul Gandhi with Lord Ram. That's wrong. And But I have given you instances to prove that the that BJP, BJP has done the double same. Double faced party. Yeah, absolutely. That BJP has done the same. But have, why does that work? No, uh, you know, uh, I'll come to another question I want Sanjay, Gahan, uh, Sanjay Jha to answer, which is about why is the Congress party even doing this and what is it to gain from it? But I'll come to that part in just a bit. Let me first settle the political argument that is going on. Our political representatives are joining us Radhika Khera from the Congress party and Gopal K. Agarwal from the BJP. Gopal K. Agarwal, everybody is pointing out to similar statements likening Prime Minister Narendra Modi the to a uh, god or a deity in the past by bjp leaders members spokespersons in the past as well so why is today suddenly bjp acting like there is some great insult to hindu religion that has taken place is that not hypocrisy no the, the thing is that we have to understand the whole uh, the purpose of what congress is doing they have been undermining Hindu religion at various point of time just to uh, do their appeasement politics one point of time. At times when they find it uh, in their benefit for their political uh, issue, like in uh, Gujarat when Rahul Gandhi said that I wear a Janeu, I am a Shiva. Hmm. And they, they have denied the existence of Lord Rama. So they, they did everything under their back to stop the construction of Ram Temple at Ayodhya. They filed an affidavit that Ram is a fictitious character uh, in the uh, in the Supreme Court when uh, this Ram Setu issue came. So the thing is that they have been undermining Hinduism at many point of time just to go for their under, uh, politics of appeasement and really communal politics. But one thing. You can Second, let, no, no, let Gopal me ji. just a 30 second one more. Hmm. I want to ask Salman Khurshid and Congress leader, will they compare their leader to gods in other religion also? They have the audacity to do that. Why they undermine always Hinduism? Why but, they undermine... Sir, exactly uh, that question is being goddesses? asked. Now, I can understand that you are saying that Congress is hypocritical because it never supports quote-unquote Hindu causes, including the construction of Ram Temple. It opposed it. And we know the role that Congress has played. But it now today wants to invoke Lord Ram. I can understand that political argument. But when you say that Hindu sentiments are being hurt by this, is that also not a hypocritical argument? Because BJP no. has done that in the past. No, the thing is that they have been... What is the quality that Rahul Gandhi possesses that he should be compared to Lord Ram? But sir, that is an He's individual's decision. No, Salman Khurshid no. considers Rahul Gandhi... Uh, uh, as good as Lord Ram. That, his, that is his personal opinion. Na? You don't have to no, agree no. with it. The thing is that he is on bail. He, Rahul Gandhi is on bail. He has so many issues with regard to his uh, allegations. But what qualities does he consider because he is moving in a t-shirt, he is Lord Ram? The thing okay. is, what qualities does he possess? He should give, elaborate them, elaborate them. What, why he considered Rahul Gandhi as Lord Ram? Unhone what bol diya. But whether that he, analogy in itself works or not, that frankly, I don't think there's so any explanation required. I don't he think, has, any, as Sanjay Shah was saying, any objection. mere mortal should be compared to Lord Ram and certainly not somebody in politics because that comparison will always fall be, short. It will always no, no. fall short. Yeah, but, so it is not only, there are two, three things we have to consider. One thing is that uh, Congress never believes in the existence of Ram. Okay, fair they enough. I'll take that to our so Congress representatives. The that, when uh, the BJP does it, qualities. it is still coming from we a certain... We don't find any qualities which okay. can be compared in Rahul Gandhi to Lord Ram. The third is, will they do it the same comparison with other, uh, with other gods? Okay. Or religious gods? These are the three things we are questioning. <clears throat> okay, okay. Let me take that one by one to Radhika Khera. Radhika Khera, the first allegation the Congress gets it that you don't actually believe in Hindu faith and causes but 
when it suits you when it is you know uh, when it comes to playing to the gallery and possibly even wooing hindus in this country then you invoke ram you know it's very ironic how the bjp spokesperson thinks that comparing lord ram lord krishna vishnu ji um, to uh, i have uh, three Manarindra questions on Modi this company sir let her let her finish let her finish sir. So, so are you so rattled? We understand. Yeah, we understand I, the Bharat Jodo Yatra has rattled you people, but please let's maintain some decorum on the. Gopal ji, I'll give you now, more opportunity. Now, just adding to what finish. Sanjay Jha ji, let's let me just add to what Sanjay Jha ji said. He gave you three statements: one from January 18, 2022, one from 1st November 2022, and one from 13th October 2022. Mm. Those were the three uh, BJP. I, I will give you another one from January 29th, 2020. Narendra Modi is Lord Ram, Amit Shah is Lord Hanuman. Hmm. Who said this? Shivraj Chauhan. Hmm. Who is Shivraj Chauhan? He is the um, <clears throat> Madhya Pradesh Chief Minister. I'm hmm. sorry, but I take offense to Lord Rama and Hanuman ji being compared to someone who was a tadipa, someone who is responsible for all those people who died in Gujarat because it happened under his watch. Someone who is responsible. How can you compare Lord Rama to someone who cannot fight for justice for Bilkis Banu? Do you know who Lord Rama was? Because a man gave objection and said that Sita Maya वहाँ पे नहीं रह सकती वो रावण के वहाँ पे हो क्या ये तो Lord Rama ने राज धर्म निभाया and what did he do? He left everything for his people. Okay, and I think we should not today? go down the road of who can be compared to Lord Rama. Nobody course, can why, be. Why not? Why not? Nobody can be. Following the footsteps. We are following the footsteps of That's Lord Rama. That's fine. Then you are so following, following the footsteps. The... You are not Lord Ram. You are, Ram. You are following, you are following the footsteps, comparing... but you are, are you not like Lord Ram. Narendra Modi and how are you comparing Narendra Modi and Amit Shah? No, no. So that's Lord fine. But Radhika, come I'm to the sorry. question I am I asking. I take objection. I am a very, I am a very staunch. You should have objected that point. My God, being insulted. I'm sorry. Why didn't you object? But why didn't you object then? Why are you objecting today? I the God or uh, the party this comparison is in response to people. Sir, I did not speak in between. I'm sorry, but this is a very subtle debate. Let's continue. Okay, that. but Radhika, can I can I, Ra- you can I refocus you on the question that I am asking? Can I refocus you on the question that I am asking? The now, question. Why I'm, this is a problem today? Let me tell you that. Why the BJP and the spokespersons and they are coming out with all these kinds of chatu karita words and everything in their press conference? Hmm. Because the fact is that they are rattled by the. a uh, support that the bharat jodo yatra is getting across the country hmm. they are rattled by the fact that uh, rahul gandhi ji went and paid homage to atal bihari vajpayee ji prime minister narendra modi ji has never been to the samadhi of our first prime minister jawahar lal nehru ji he never respects the chair he sits on so they have to deviate from everything that is happening because the world the country every uh, person in india is seeing through what the bharatiya janata party is actually okay. what prime minister but no, radhika no, no, one second no, no, one second no, no, one by one no, gopal ji i will do the anchoring please Radhika, you didn't answer the question I'm asking. All of that is fine, but the now coming back the to co- what Salman Khurshid. No, no, Radhika, said. please listen to my question. Please focus on the question I'm asking you. The allegation the Congress faces is that you don't actually respect Hindu Aastha. Salman Khurshid is the leader who called Hindutva like ISIS and Boko Haram, as if it has perpetuated some <laughs> great terror across the con- uh, world like ISIS. But to when it's convenient, you invoke Hindu faith. and the other question that uh, gopal ji is asking is you will never take the name of any other god in vain like this you will you not say that he is so hai. and so ki hum kaun se bhagwan ji ka naam lenge nahi lenge aur aap logo ko bahut takleef ho rahi hai i'm sorry par hindu dharm mein ye kahin nahi sikhaya jata ki kisi aur dharm ki mahila ke sath jab anyay ho जैसे गुजरात में बिल्किस बानो के साथ हुआ तो पूरी सरकार चुप्पी साध लेगी दैट इज नॉट वॉट माई हिंदुजम इज एंड दैट इज नॉट वॉट दे प्रोट्रेम सेल्स टू बी द ब्रांड एम्बेसडर्स ऑफ हिंदुजम आई एम सॉरी दे पुट एवरी हिंदू स्पेस हेड डाउन इन शेप सो वेन कमिंग बैक टू वॉट सलमान खुर्शीद जी सेट एट्स ओके हम नहीं कहते कि हमें अपने माँ बाप में भगवान दिखते हैं हमें गाने भी बने हुए कुछ में रब दिखता है सम्मान इफ यू रिस्पेक्ट सम्मान यू से दैट हमें आपके अंदर भगवान दिखता है मुझे तो I'm telling you, I see God in every fellow uh, citizen, every fellow human being. That is what our religion is all about. What okay. is the harm? अगर उनको उसमें भगवान दिख रहे हैं, लेकिन यहाँ तो कहा जा रहा है that Modi ji is uh, Hanuma, Modi ji is Ram ji. He is the twelfth, eleventh avatar of Lord Vishnu. And continue see, they don't have objection. And where, where has any ever Hinduism taught that लोगों को मारो, अन्याय करो, राज धर्म? You remember, but Vajpayee ji had asked. Modi ji to follow Raj Dhawan. Okay. Can I go across to Arun Anand now? Arun Anand, Arun Anand, Anand the Anand. other the other larger question is about peddling of South Hindutva. Uh, uh, you know, there, there is a, been a long debate of how Congress uses certain motifs and 
let's say emotional issues from hinduism uh, from time to time do you think that this is yet another attempt at peddling soft hindutva and will it work for the congress party i think you know congress is pretty confused uh, in the sense that uh, you know first uh, you have to see the larger picture hmm. what has happened after rahul gandhi has taken over the deans of the party what has happened is that the congress has moved from largely it was earlier used to be a centrist party or it used to be a slightly left of the center party hmm. but there was also a strong section of people within the congress uh, who used to be right of the center also so mm-hmm. there used to be you know, quite a balanced kind of a thing but after rahul gandhi has taken over the reins of the party the congress has moved towards radical left now uh, that has you know impacted the electoral fortunes of the congress also hmm. and they have dipped uh, as we have seen you, you know over the last 7 8 years uh, badly and now uh, time and again in between the congress is continuing on that path of the radical left but in between sometimes they try to do the course correction by making you know these kind of statements one second is that what what salman khurshid has said it doesn't surprise me because you know uh, the culture of it is coming uh, it, what he has said is not coming out of the commitment or or the uh, or he really feels very strongly about it it's a culture of psychophancy we have seen that has happened you know when uh, devkan barua had also said indra is india and india is indra hmm. so that culture of psychophancy has been there in the congress and that has been uh, that has proved to be the bane for the congress third thing is that you know uh, the people of this country have largely given the mandate hmm. that they feel that bharatiya janata party is truly associated or committed to the cause of hindutva hmm. and uh, car- congress when it tries to do these kind of things it becomes you know a very poor xerox copy or a carbon copy kind of a thing so but it actually cannot pe- go the complete mile it cannot go where yeah. bjp so, goes so so the thing is that because bjp has had you know it's ideological ground very clear they have stood by it in their manifesto also they had talked about the ram jan bhoomi temple about mm-hmm. uniforms what and they have tried to implement that so i think this it's a larger basically issue where congress in between you know uh, from being radical left they sometimes try to you know move towards you know a little bit of towards center okay. or towards right of the center because of the pressure which they feel because uh, of today's to, indian politics in politi- the electoral politics yeah. so indian i think that has shifted a little bit towards the right and congress also as a player in that politics that, that, has they are trying to do that but uh, somehow that cannot happen basically because it is traversing on that path and you need a kind of an ideological commitment congress actually is bereft of any ideology right now okay. it is actually so that's exactly the charge that i was mentioning that when it comes from the congress party does it come from a place of seriousness and actual you know a faith in hindu and hindu values or does it come just as you know using it as a prop from time to time i want to take a couple of points that arun anand made to uh, radhika first and i'll do go across to sanjay jha next radhika you know the question that is also asked is that the congress party has been for the last 7 8 years mocking quote on quote bjp supporters as modi bhats is if you look in if you listen to what salman khurshid said the manner in which he said what he said in reverence to rahul gandhi it almost sounds like rahul bhakti as well so are you not also indulging exactly in what you oppose in the bjp today you know <clears throat> one thing is called that being a you've seen the kind of bhakti that the bhartiya janata party bugs to you've seen it on social media uh, abuse hurling abuses at uh, an a political opponent or another political leader or someone who does not agree with their ideology ideology is the, the definition of a modi bhakt and you i'm sure i must have also faced those strollings on social media and everyone has who is not a supporter of the bhartiya janata party or is a neutral uh, patrakar also so nobody from the congress is hurling abuses or neither any congress supporter is hurling abuses at anyone who supports narendra modi ji we are living in a sabhya samaj and everybody is entitled to their own political choices That's and we are not enemies we are not hindustan pakistan it's not that the congress is india and the bharatiya janata party is pakistan and we are going to take each other's head off we are in a polit- we are in an environment in a democracy where you have the right to choose your political leader but if i support a certain political party my bhakti towards that one particular leader cannot give me the power and cannot give me the right to go and abuse or uh, say anything that they want to someone else okay all right so that is i want to bring in gopal krishna just one second gopal ke agarwal uh, your response to what you've heard from both sanjay jha and from radhika now 
that you know bjp should be the last person to lecture on this one because you have likened your leaders to gods in the past and second because uh, you know if you come you feel your leaders are good enough to be compared to a deity then so uh, feels the congress party one thing is is the congress doing this in response to bjp this is the basic question that i also want to ask second thing is i don't find anything of qualities in the rahul gandhi which can be compared to uh, lord ram because he has he is on bail and the third point is the thing is the congress has been abusing the prime minister and left right and center the language that they have been using to the prime minister they are saying that bjp abuses their leader the way they have called our prime minister narendra modi ji amit shah ji the way they are not even respecting democracy we are a democratically elected uh, prime minister we are a democratically elected party for uh, this is the second term that that we are uh, in the power they have not even the mindset is not accepting bjp so they are disrespecting even the democratic setup they are questioning evm they are questioning they are the language okay. they have used for the prime minister and Can they I are talking about never abuse and uh, 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 the thing is that their basic faith in hindu philosophy hindu religion is not there they have been questioning ram therefore they have no right to compare this and to hail ram okay all right okay. i'm also getting some and updates and, and we'll get to hear from salman kushid in just a bit communal thinking Can they I are communal politics one second they are playing communal politics they compare their leader to ram lord ram but they cannot compare to other religious god okay so but that's they, a separate that debate why you mindset. can't compare it uh, compare him to any other uh, religious uh, uh, faith leader or god because you know that's a completely different debate let's not get into that because it will open completely no, different can of words but you also compare your leaders answer. to hindu deities only na sir so the question doesn't arise but i want to go across to sanjay jha on the larger question that the congress party is facing bharat jodo and its message aside its success its import its result and its impact aside is it also not true sanjay jha that the congress party's messaging is indeed a little bit confusing from time to time they do these things they will present themselves as true believers of hindu faith but there are you know scores of other things that happen in between those instances where the congress has been unable to you know find its space amongst the hindu voter today on top of that it is also losing its muslim voter base it's now stuck in the middle where sometimes it doesn't know whom to woo and it's losing both uh shivani the last i heard India was still a secular country hmm. based on its Indian constitution unless the BJP has some plans to amend it. Uh number 2 very critical that end of day what is this question of minority appeasement? I want to ask this gentleman Mr Gopal Agarwal who's normally a very moderate person but sounds a little bit rabid today obviously has to defend Narendra Modi who was called Nero by the Supreme Court for looking away when people were dying in the Gujarat riots but the truth is this and this is something that he needs to answer pragya singh thakur uses the most dangerous diabolical diabolical language of weaponizing people against you know all kinds of threats supposed you know phantoms and your prime minister and i will say your prime minister because he belongs to your party he is my prime minister because i am a citizen of this country is silent can you imagine a prime minister silent when a member of parliament from bhopal threatens very brazenly people from another community it's out there in the open for god's sake i mean gopal krishna agarwal go home and take a look in the mirror when this debate is over and the second point shivani very important no but you didn't answer my question i'm answering your question i'm answering your question you know religion is a private matter okay but i am forced because of the bjp to make a confession on your program and this confession i need not make i do i don't have to defend myself but i am a proud practicing hindu i even have a small temple in my home hmm. but who is the bjp and the rss who is narendra modi and amit shah who is the rss mohan bhagwat or gopal krishna agarwal to give me a certificate of my true hinduism or then who is the congress party to tell they? us what is hinduism and hindutva that goes both let ways me, sanjay jha let me answer that the congress party actually doesn't have to prove its credentials and that's one of the reasons why i have been upset with my party i have always been uh, saying Shivani, carry one, your second one second, one, second one, one by one one by Gopal, one do not interrupt me i have not interrupted you please be silent you will get your chance and shivani will do that she is highly democratic my point is congress should wear <coughs> secularism with pride on its badge 
a badge of honor because this country is got to be you know stop this whole political discourse of hindu muslim binary needs to stop because the one who's playing the ultimate appeasement and i call it the majority appeasement politics is the bjp they are actually but you are denying sanjay jha that because congress my played hinduism teaches me love and no compassion. no forget about the hinduism okay. debate are you denying that congress party for many many decades did indulge in minority appeasement i'm asking you this because it had a muslim vote bank there are other parties not bjp today who are accusing the congress party of using muslims as a vote bank but never really truly delivering for them and they are the parties who criticized the parties like congress today that you've used this for for decades I, the question i am asking you today is that is the congress's messaging confused it doesn't know who well, to who and it's losing both voter bases well let me tell you it is losing votes for reasons other than you know what the mentions the reasons you have given okay. but let's think about it out of the 17 general elections held in india the congress Money. has won 10 of them yes, gopal, Jai, gopal Jai. krishna agarwal you are an economist so let me ask you a question kya congress 10 chunav jeet sakti 17 mein kya congress bharat ko 55 saal tak chalai hai sarkar bana ke yadi sirf 14% muslimano ne unke liye vote kiya kya bharat ke un hinduon ka apmaan nahi kar rahe hain तिरस्कार नहीं कर रहे हैं जिन्होंने कांग्रेस को समर्थन दिया है नहीं बट नो नो संजय झा संजय झा बाय दैट लॉजिक नो नो आई वांट टू टेक योर आर्गुमेंट फर्दर बाय दैट लॉजिक मॉकिंग दोस हु वोट फॉर द बीजेपी टुडे इज आल्सो अ प्रॉब्लम अमंगस्ट द कांग्रेस इकोसिस्टम लेट्स एक्सेप्ट दैट वेल आई रेज दैट इशू विद राधिका शी फील्स वी डोंट डू इट बट दैट्स नॉट ट्रू यू लुक एट सोशल मीडिया टुडे दोस हु सपोर्ट द बीजेपी आर कॉल्ड ऑल काइंड्स ऑफ नेम्स लेट्स बी ऑनेस्ट अबाउट इट So you Bhani nobody can sit on their high horse on this issue, but I'm running out of time. Gopal Krishna, Bhani, uh, Gopal Agarwal. Uh, no, sorry, Sanjay. Gopal, one minute, please. Uh, uh, I'll give a brief answer. One thing is that when San, uh, Sanjay Jha is taking this level uh, debate to the intellectual level, I want to ask him: Was this country not secular before Indira Gandhi entered the word secular in the constitution? It was secular. The thing is that the Congress has been playing the politics of appeasement for vote bank politics. That is very clear. They had been talking about Muslim appeasement, upbringing Muslims. But you see the Sachar Committee report. Okay. What it said after 60 years of Congress rule, Muslims were the most sufferers. And now under Narendra Modi ji's rule, everybody is getting the benefit equally, <laughs> whether it is any religion. The thing is, Congress has been giving lip right. service to the secularism right. and okay. playing. I can't politics. quite get into that the debate of the secularism today because we were discussing point and fixing. This is part of their communal politics. Okay, fair enough. You have made your point, Gopal ji. To uh, compare their leadership to Ra Lord Ram, this is also part of their communal politics. Now. Okay, can I give a final word to Arun Anand as well? I've got only barely about thirty forty seconds left. Arun Anand, the question I ask once again is: In the run up to twenty twenty four. do you see as you are saying some effort from the congress party to come back to a more centrist position rahul gandhi visits the samadhi of atal bihari vajpayee several people are reading a lot into that uh, i am not sure whether salman khurshid's comment is an attempt towards that but since you criticize the way the congress has gone under rahul gandhi's leadership now he's vacated the congress chief's position but do you sense that there could be a course correction from them no i don't think there will be a course correction for them and i would Uh, keep it very brief you know i think uh, people like salman khurshid are proving to be major asset for bjp he had done earlier also you know in the batla house and counter case a similar kind of a thing mm. and the more congress tries to you know uh, do these kind of things there will be a more push back you know from the uh, hindus uh, hindu society but uh, last uh, thing which i want to say is see when people vote mm. they not only vote on the basis of you know whether it's a hindu or a muslim that that uh, aspect of hindutva is there mm -hmm. but ultimately it's a combination of you know the delivery on the ground the organizational cadre the ideological uh, positions which you have taken so it's a it, there are multiple factors so congress is lacking all these factors it doesn't have an ideology its organization is in shambles yeah. it doesn't have an inspiring leadership so going ahead in 2024 i think these are very cosmetic kind of you know statements which do more harm to congress okay. and more benefit to bjp actually all right i leave it at that one thing is for sure that the bharat jodo yatra for many many reasons is grabbing headlines we'll wait and see what its impact is eventually for the congress party's fortunes but speaking of this entire episode over salman khurshid's comments there's a very serious and concerning piece of news coming in a bounty has been announced on salman khurshid's head 
But in the meantime, when the Congress leader himself was asked the question of how this bounty was announced on his head post his comments, he's saying that he's praising Lord Ram. Will that comment also backfire? Let's listen in. एक महंत राजूदास नाम के एक शख्स ने ऐलान किया है कि आपके खिलाफ के सर काटने का 21 करोड़ रुपया इनाम भी रखा गया है इस बात पे कि आपने राम की तारीफ करने में भगवान राम की तारीफ करने में मेरा सर कटेगा अगर भगवान राम की तारीफ करने में मेरा सर कटता है तो कट जाए कट जाए भगवान की राम की तारीफ की है ना उनको क्यों इतनी शिकायत है भगवान राम से क्या बात है भगवान राम को सीमित करते हैं क्यों अपने पास भगवान राम सबके हैं सबके हैं और अगर वो ऐसी बात कहते हैं तो मुझे ऐसा लगता है कि मर्यादा पुरुषोत्तम को उन्होंने आज तक ना पहचाना ना जाना वेल लुक्स लाइक दिस बैटल विल कंटिन्यू बट मूविंग ऑन टू द अदर बिग स्टोरी दैट वे आर ट्रैकिंग ओवर टू एन ऑन ग्राउंड इन्वेस्टिगेशन बाय सीएनएन न्यूज 18 फ्रॉम वेस्ट बंगाल व्हिच हैज फाउंड ग्रेव इररेगुलरिटीज इन द पीएम आवास योजना एंड इट्स बेनिफिशियरीज लिस्ट पीपल हु डिडंट डिजर्व द एड फ्रॉम द गवर्नमेंट टू बिल्ड अ पक्का हाउस पीपल हु ऑलरेडी हैव गुड हाउसेस और डोंट क्वालीफाई फॉर द स्कीम on other parameter having their names on these list now as 17 lakh such fraud names have been deleted by the west bengal government the political battle is increasing with the bjp alleging that the fraud was perpetrated with the knowledge of the mamta banerjee led tmc government in east medinipur we found several people who made it to the list of beneficiaries of the pradhan mantri awas yojana but here's the twist They currently live in big lavish houses but are also in the running for a scheme providing homes to the rural poor. You can see behind me a palatial house, a very big bungalow. This is located in East Mednapur of Bengal. But this house, the owner of this house according to the list has also got an registration in Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. Now that is the big issue before panchayat election. of both the side hmm. Shubhra Santra's name was there in the list but has now been deleted Amar mane sosure tin chhele amake bare alada bhai ekhane boro bhai ar mejo bhai thake amake alada kore diyeche amake ei jayga ta diyeche ekhon tara ekhane ranna kore khay amake ei jayga ta diyeche bare ei jonno ami korechilam bari korbo bole alada bhabe ei jonno pradhan mantri abar jonno ektai korechilam It was a similar picture at the Das residence. In Haldia, this is another house behind me as you can see the house of uh, Ratan Chandra Das who's one of the brothers stay here. His name uh, what we are getting it from the sources here local people are saying this is the original house he has another house in somewhere else in East Medinipur but his name uh, was there in Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana. Ami thik janti jani na to bolte parbo ebar जिज्ञास after anger over alleged corruption in the beneficiary list with panchayat polls coming up the issue has become the latest flashpoint between the tmc and the bjp we are with the people of bengal we are with the poorest of the poor in bengal who deserve to be given funds to build their homes and not to people who uh, owe their allegiance to the tmc we are also going to challenge the matter in the court thorough inspection is taking place at the panchayat level and as you know by now already 17 lakhs name have been deleted our government is absolutely dedicated and that's why thorough investigation is taking place we are standing in east mednipur here the percentage of deletion of names from pradhan mantri awas yojana till now is more than 35% this is the scene in other districts on an average 10 to 15% percent delete is deletion is common TMC government is trying to show that they are cleaning up the system on the other hand BJP will make this as an issue in panchayat polls 
but who will really get the uh, Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana, that is to be seen. And in overall, how much deletion takes place, that is also to be seen. This is Kamalika Sengupta with Angshuman reporting from Haldia for CNN News 18. Meanwhile, this is becoming a big issue ahead of Panchayat elections in West Bengal. Anger is also growing on the ground. Those who deserve to be on the Prime Minister Awas Yojana list are fighting for their rights. कुछ घर जोने अमना गोरी मनुष शादारन मनुष एक तो घर में तो चार जन लोग था थी तो ना अमना पाठ को ना बड़ो लोग रह पाठ को अमना छोड़ जाओ ना आमादर घर ठीक कुत्ते लग में तामना कारण अमन नोटिंग में आमादर एक टाइम जो अनुरोध वीडियो है ना आमादर बारिश जाओ देखो जब अमना पाठ को की पाठ को ना आधा पाथर Let's go across to the guest joining us. Shatarupa is joining us from the West Bengal BJP unit. Uh, Sanjay Chakrabarti is a TMC supporter. Dr. Ajay Dua is former Secretary, Ministry of Industry and Commerce. Jaydeep Majumdar is Associate Editor, Sarajay. I'm going across to Sanjay Chakrabarti first. Sanjay, you are we are hearing from uh, a lot of these people who feel they are the ones who deserve these houses. These are the houses, these are the poorest of the poor, these are the destitute people who don't have a chair on their head. और जिस तरह की रिपोर्ट्स हमने खुद जाके देखा है जिस तरह के लोग आ, लोगों का नाम इस लिस्ट में है उससे तो यही इंडिकेशन होता है कि लोकल लेवल पे भी मिड लेवल पे भी और सरकार के लेवल पे भी बहुत बड़ा करप्शन हुआ है इस लिस्ट को लेके इस योजना को लेके संजय जी आप अपने आप को अनम्यूट कर सकते हैं क्या जी बोलिए अब आपकी आवाज आ रही है जी मैंने कहा कि अगर ये आपको लगता है कि ये करप्शन केवल वेस्ट बंगाल में हुआ तो मैं आपको बता दूं कि ये ऐसा करप्शन जो है पूरे इंडिया में है तो ये वेस्ट बंगाल कोई इकलौता राज्य नहीं है जहां आप इस टाइप में करप्शन हुआ है मैं आपको बता सकता हूं कि यही प्रयागराज में लगभग एक लोग ऐसे हैं जिन जो इनकी डेथ हो चुकी है जिनका नाम जो है कहीं से भी नहीं है किसी भी तरीके से ठीक है वो डेथ हो चुकी है उनके नाम पे जो है रजिस्टर्ड किया हुआ है मकान को ठीक है तो ये ये करप्शन हर जगह पे है हर डिपार्टमेंट में है बट संजय जी एक नाम और 17 लाख फ्रॉड नाम इसमें फर्क होता है ना बिसाइड बिसाइड संजय जी संजय जी करप्शन का एक्सक्यूज कभी ये नहीं हो सकता की बाकी लोग भी कर रहे हैं करप्शन नहीं मैं केवल आपको एक शहर में और केवल सिर्फ और सिर्फ जिनकी डेथ हो चुकी है मैं उनके बारे में आपसे बात कर रहा हूँ मैं उनके बारे में बात ही नहीं कर रहा हूँ जो और अदर करप्शन है मैं कह रहा हूँ एक सौ लोग जो इस दुनिया में नहीं है उनके नाम पे मकान अलर्ट किया गया हुआ है कि ये करप्शन जो है केवल और केवल सिर्फ और सिर्फ पश्चिम बंगाल में ही क्यों दिखता है दूसरे राज्यों में क्यों नहीं दिखता है मैं दूसरे राज्यों में भी दिखेगा वो सामने आएगा लेकिन अभी तो वेस्ट बंगाल की बात करें ना बाकी राज्यों में क्या हो रहा है वहाँ तो टीएमसी का कोई लेना देना नहीं है टीएमसी की सरकार वेस्ट बंगाल में चल रही है ममता बनर्जी बोलती है जीरो टॉलरेंस टू करप्शन उनके अंडर हो रहा है तो आप उसका जवाब दीजिए ना बाकी सरकार क्या कर रही है वो उनकी जनता पूछेगी ना देखिए पहली बात तो ये है कि अगर इस तरह के कोई करप्शन किसी तरीके से सामने आया भी हुआ होगा इसकी पूरी तरीके से जांच की होगी दूध का दूध पानी का पानी किया जाएगा ऐसा कुछ नहीं है किसी भी तरीके जीरो टॉलरेंस आपने यहाँ देखा होगा हमारे यहाँ पे इमीडिएट जो है जैसे पार्सो है और चटर्जी के बारे में आपने देखा होगा उन्होंने तुरंत पार्टी से निकाल दिया तुरंत जो है एक्शन लिया गया उसके ऊपर और उनके मंत्री पद भी उनको छीन लिया गया हमारे यहाँ पर जीरो टॉलरेंस था है और रहेगा हमेशा शतरूपा द टीएमसी इज ऑल्सो सेइंग दैट यू नो देव डिलीटेड सेवेंटीन लैक ऑफ दोज नेम सो वॉट इज द प्रॉब्लम नाउ देव एक्सेप्टेड दी एर Shivani, first of all, it's a pleasure to be in Delhi and to be on your show. Thank you. And I would specially like to take ten seconds to thank Kamalika Sen Gupta for this fantastic uh, report that she's prepared from uh, West Bengal, specifically East Medinipur. Hmm. Uh, coming back to what uh, Shonjaya Ji was saying, 
you know it is all very well like I said it is fantastic weather in Delhi, it is very nice weather to go on political tourism from all over India, but it is also very nice to keep on focusing on your own state. This state of West Bengal under the rule of Trinomul for the last 11 years have taken corruption to an all time low. And when I say an all time low, where I, I would like to reiterate this because they they had come with a promise of uh, you know zero corruption they wanted to change the 34 years of left rule but when they come and they scream themselves hoarse only on television even on national television that they have a zero tolerance policy as far as corruption is concerned this is what they keep on doing they have taken corruption to an all level low they have been uh, the, you know to get uh, Pradhan Mantri Avas Yojana to get your name enlisted, the one and only qualification you need to have is to be a Trinomul Karikarta, not even an ordinary Karikarta. Mind you, what Kamalika has presented is something that I myself have been trying to say all over regional television. I think yours is the first channel which is being doing this on national level. And I would really like to thank you. We've been screaming ourselves hoarse about this. That Trinomul Karikartas have got two houses, three houses. Uh, there's one channel I was representing where somebody said, I have two sons, so therefore I have to have two houses. And she's very proud about the fact. You know very well Under that this there is a very recently an entire This Yojana is for the absolute poor. Poorest of the poor, yeah. this is way below the poverty line, this is targeted for people who can't even dream of having a house, this is the Pradhan Mantri's honorable prime minister's dream that every single person in India no matter how poor the person is will have a roof over the person's head. Mm. This is what Trinamul has been doing in West Bengal, just one of the but things Chaturpa, that how would you respond that to they the have been allocating this. How would you respond to, for example, the TMC supported on today's show and we have been discussing this through the day. They are saying that this is happening in virtually every other state. Why are you singling out West Bengal? No, please show me. Please show me the data and please tell me where it is happening in the other states. Then I am willing to respond. You give me solid data. It is no point, you know, Mul, once again I am saying it is no point, you know, Mul, going on political tourism and touring the whole of India because they don't have a choice, they don't have any they don't have any political presence anywhere in India except West Bengal, which is also going to fizzle out very soon. However, if they want to travel all over India, they are most welcome. Okay. They should then can I go across to the way the other BJP Can I go across to Jaydeep Pazundar who is raising his finger? Yes, Jaydeep, you wanted to come in? Uh, there are two. There are a few things out here. See, it's pointless saying that it's happening in all of the states. The discussion is about in West Bengal, mm. and if the Trinamool has evidence of it happening in other states, it's most <laughs> welcome to present that evidence. Mm. Uh, Number two, this is this has been happening in West Bengal. Corruption in each and every scheme has been happening in West Bengal under the Trinamool Trinamool rule. If we remember during Amphan, even uh, even uh, 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 cyclone relief, you mm. know there was a uh, cyclone called Amphan, and even in that relief there was a huge lot of corruption. Tripal Chor, Karpolin ka chori kya gaya? If uh, Trinamool uh, leaders, functionaries at the ground level, that had become a big issue in 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 West Bengal. Right. As far as far as as far as uh, the the, the, the Trinamool leadership now trying to distance itself from this ground level corruption and, and anomalies which have happened, I ask them, you know, in a state like West Bengal, we stay in West Bengal, we know very well that not a leaf can move without Mamta Banerjee's nod. Mm -hmm. How come this has happened under her watch? Is she incompetent? Either she is incompetent or she is complicit. Okay. Either of the two and that's why she's gay. No, that is exactly the argument that was made during the Partha Chatterjee, uh, you know, case as well, because that was a minister right in the cabinet. But I want to go across Absolutely. to Dr. Ajay Dua to understand exactly this. You know, this level, there are so many new benchmarks that have been created for the schemes. In a lot of cases, it's direct benefit transfer. And there, even for the Avas Yojana, there are many, you know, steps and checks and balances in place. And yet, such massive corruption has taken place. Do you believe this could have been the handiwork only of workers on the ground, of the panchayati heads and village heads and some local officers or this cannot be perpetuated without the knowledge of higher officials? Uh, Shivani, thank you for having me on your show. I am happy to explain that 
under the Prime Minister's Avas Yojana, it has two components, Grameen and the Urban. Mm-hmm. The benchmarks are somewhat different, mm. but it would be right to say, as has been said by a fellow panelists and you, that this scheme is meant for people who are at the bottom of the rank, mm-hmm. defined as 12 lakh rupees household income annual. Mm-hmm. That is 1 lakh rupee annual a monthly income of the household, not individual. Under both the schemes, the eligibility criteria has been laid. In the case of Grameen scheme, there is a, a further criteria mm-hmm. that the name should appear in the socio-economic, uh, uh, socio-economic and caste census, which was conducted in 2011 all over the country, especially and all the rural areas were covered, and deprivation uh, in with respect to housing fully indicated there who are the people who do not have a paka house and define what's a paka house, what mm. whether it's a, and in addition, of course, people who are absolutely houseless. There are many people even now. Mm-hmm. So the, the eligibility criteria was that the states, the, the local setup of the state governments, that's the district authorities and those below, would pick up people people only in the rural areas, only who figure in the deprivation list of this caste census. Mm. Data came out much later, though it was conducted in 2011, but in good time, because the urban scheme was launched in 2015, 1st April, and the rural scheme on 1st April 2016, a year later. Mm. And uh, of course, we all know that Prior to this, from 1985 onwards, there was an Indra, Indra Gandhi Avas Yojana, which was, which had all the, with all its faults, etc., it had continued till it was replaced by the urban and the rural. Yeah. rural Dr. State. Dua, uh, because region. I have limited time, I want to ask you one more time. As a high, yes, uh, you know, a high placed functionary and bureaucrat, do you believe this level of corruption that is coming to light from West Bengal and its beneficiaries list? can happen just at the local level or there has to be connivance at the top level? If it is such large scale, that deletion of 17 lakh, 1.7 million people has taken place when there were an outcry, Hmm. then certainly it cannot be limited to people only at the village level or Hmm. even I would say the taluka, tehsil or the district level. Hmm. There's certainly involvement of people higher up in the scheme of things maybe government authorities, maybe party authorities. And we all do know that in West Bengal, the party uh, the, the, the party officials call the shots call the at shots. almost well, that's, all the levels. This is exactly so why, Sanjay, this is so damning for the TMC because we already know about West Bengal culture of cut money, etc. It may have not impacted the last assembly elections result. But Sanjay ji, kab tak Mamta Banerjee ye bolti rengi ki corruption agar hua hai to kisi aur ke haath se hua hai, meri zimmedari nahi banti. Chief Minister to wohi hai na? Unke under ho raha hai to unki zimmedari banti hai. Pahli baat to unki zimmedari kyu nahi banti hai, ye to aap achhi tarah jaante hai, jab bhi aisi koi corruption ke baare mein jab bhi pata chala hai, ab logon ne turant uske upar action diya hai. Aisa nahi ki action nahi liya gaya hai. Hamesha action liya gaya hai aur hamesha jo hai usko हम लोगों ने देखा है उस चीज को कि उसको किस तरीके से हम ऑपरेट करें करप्शन मैं फिर वही बता रहा हूं वेस्ट बंगाल का करप्शन ही क्यों दिखता है हमेशा करप्शन तो पूरे इंडिया में फैला हुआ है किस जगह पे करप्शन नहीं है अभी आपने देखा मौलवी का पुल गिरा हुआ है नहीं है ना मौलवी का मौलवी का पुल अभी आपने देखा था जो गिरा हुआ जिसमें 135 लोग की जान चली गई उसका क्या कौन सा एक्शन हुआ सिर्फ और सिर्फ बारह लाख रुपए खर्चा हुआ दो करोड़ में से एक करोड़ अठासी लाख का कोई जो इतना बड़ा करप्शन हुआ एक सौ पैंतीस तो प्राइवेट कंपनी के हाथ में था ये तो सेंट्रल गवर्नमेंट की स्कीम है ये तो सरकार स्टेट गवर्नमेंट की स्कीम है ये जेडी बॉडी वॉन्ट टू से वेरी क्विकली आई टू गिव शोतरूप द फाइनल वर्ड इज वेल वॉट अबाउट ऑफ द तृणमूल डज नॉट जेल इट इज इट इज दिस इज नॉट एक्सेप्टेबल दैट करप्शन है मोरबी और सम अदर Palana Tikana place, and so there's nothing wrong in corruption happening out here. This doesn't cut any ice with the people of West Bengal. Mm. I'm sorry to say that. Yeah, Shatrupa. 
Yeah, thank you, Shivani. I just want to take uh, just very, very, very short time. I want to take a thread from uh, Jaydeep Majumdar as well as uh, Dr. Dua uh, that yes, corruption in West Bengal it happens with uh, quote unquote onuprerona of the Honorable Chief Minister. Everything that is placated everywhere is written in, under the inspiration of Mamata Banerjee. I would just like to remind you, uh, remind uh, through you, uh, Shonja Chakraborty. Hmm. That does he remember that there is very recently an Asha Kormi who has died? She committed suicide because she couldn't handle the pressures of the top level government. She was she was she couldn't face the people who she was she had to deny because she you know she she was not allowed to do the for formality of uh, the inquiries because uh, the top level the panchayat level had told her mm. and not only her I mean she's just one example. And she was not allowed to do the proper inquiries. They were given a list. These Asha Kormis were given a list. Asha Kormi, I'm sure Shivani, you know, okay. is even a, a lower rank, the lower rung than uh, the Anganwadi workers. Mm -hmm. They are the, the, the lowest possible level. The very ordinary people, they are absolutely on the ground level. They were compelled to commit suicide. Where is Bengal headed? And then we have people like Shanjay Chakraborty, the Trinamool spokesperson, who come and say, no, no, Trinamool has a zero tolerance to corruption. Then what sort of tolerance are you talking about? Yes, and at the back of what has happened in the SSC scam, where again, the very ordinary people, exactly. their lives were affected. Here, the poorest of the poor, who could get Absolutely. a benefit that they needed so much for a better life and it's been and taken no away from them. Towards One people, wonders where this, how this will impact the politics of West Bengal and whether the government in power today will face questions from the public at large. We're already seeing signs of that emerging. There was a lot of deep-seated anger over the SSC scam. There was a lot of deep-seated anger in this case as well that is coming to light. So you can worry yeah. about corruption in other states. Ultimately, the chief minister is answerable to the public that she's ruling in the state that she is ruling. I have run out of time. I do thank all of our guests for joining us. We will continue to track this story very, very closely. Time for a very short break. On the other side, some more news and updates, especially on the blizzard of the century that has left nearly 50 dead across the USA.